Hi, and welcome to the Cancelled News. I'm Adam Yenser. My pronouns are he, him, his, and my interjections are huh, what, and ew. Please be sure to like and subscribe because I'm quickly closing in on 1,000 subscribers, which is a really important milestone because it's an arbitrary number that we've ascribed meaning to. I'll be off next week because I'll be performing at Looney's in Colorado Springs. If you're in the area, please come check out the show. Uh, this Wednesday was climate night when several late night comedy hosts dedicated their shows to raising awareness of climate change. So in that spirit, I am going to do my part to participate in climate night by using this episode to focus on climate change, specifically how the comedy climate has changed as all of these people are at least one to two degrees less funny than they used to be. Now here's what's in the news. Photos were published showing Border Patrol agents on horseback turning away Haitian refugees at the Texas border. Several news outlets and Democratic politicians claimed the border agents were using whips on migrants, but it was the horse's reins. Basically, according to liberals, every string, rope, or piece of twine they ever find is either a noose or a whip. It's unclear how migrants from the Caribbean got to Texas, but my theory is they get vaccinated then float across on their giant swollen testicles. There are currently almost 9,000 migrants living under the Del Rio International Bridge on the Texas border waiting to be processed. The migrants hope to come to America, get jobs, and wind up stuck in that traffic. Between the traffic jam and the homeless people, that looks like every bridge in my neighborhood here in California. To protect the Texas border from more illegal crossings, Governor Abbott has approved a steel wall of police vehicles several miles long. And to protect the Canadian border, they've put up a line of police vehicles several kilometers long. Jojo Siwa made her same-sex dancing debut on Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars is that show where professional dancers with dance instructor parents who became famous for dancing in their dancing videos try their hand at dancing. Oh, I hope she's good! At the Emmy Awards on Sunday, Conan O'Brien joined Stephen Colbert's staff on stage as they accepted their writing award. Obviously, everyone knew Conan doesn't really write for Colbert because Conan is funny. You see, Stephen Colbert used to be a brilliantly hilarious comedian. As host of The Colbert Report, his ingenious character, quick wit, and likable personality made him one of the funniest hosts on television. But now, thanks to comedic climate change, he's a morose, unhappy political hack who would rather make a point than a joke. His heavy-handed segments and Trump-focused monologues are designed to get applause, not laughs. Much like fellow Daily Show alumni Samantha B, who used to be funny but now only screeches repetitive feminist talking points in a bitchy voice, Colbert was destroyed by comedic climate change. R. Kelly's legal team has brought in new witnesses who worked at his compound but say they never saw any abuse. Here's a picture of the witnesses arriving for the trial. In a speech before the UN General Assembly, Joe Biden urged the use of relentless diplomacy instead of military might to tackle global crises. Uh, I, I have some breaking news. The Biden administration just relentlessly diplomacied 10 innocent Afghan children to death. In an interview this week, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson admitted for the first time that he has six children, including one from an extramarital affair. British citizens were absolutely shocked that three different women would want to sleep with this man. I'm not sure why he ever denied the baby. The resemblance is uncanny. Donald Trump sent Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger a letter asking him to decertify the 2020 election. And we have an exclusive image of that letter. Will you decertify the election? Check yes if you like me. Amid worries about China's economy, several cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, saw significant losses this week. But Bitcoin investors are still optimistic and say all that's needed for Bitcoin to rebound is for them to trick you into buying more Bitcoin. Taliban fighters armed with rocket launchers were photographed riding swan paddle boats on a lake in central Afghanistan. I guess this is those 72 virgins they're always talking about. The swan paddle boats were available because the group of innocent kids who were supposed to use them were vaporized by the Biden administration. A 37-year-old Italian man is building a shire and living his life as a hobbit, similar to Elijah Wood, who has lived his entire 40 years as a hobbit. True story, women on Tinder think every man under six feet tall lives his life as a hobbit. Samuel Adams is releasing a new Utopia beer, which because of its 28% alcohol volume, is illegal in 15 states. It's like the absinthe of beer. 
A year after a New York Post story on the topic was censored and called Russian disinformation, Politico confirmed that the Hunter Biden laptop and emails are real. I'm back, baby! Nope, nope, shut up, not in this episode, you're not. An Oregon school employee was fired after showing up in blackface to protest vaccine mandates. The school said they regretted not doing it sooner when she showed up in blackface to protest Cool Ranch Doritos being removed from the vending machine. I can't believe people are still trying blackface. The only way it is ever okay for anyone to show up anywhere with a blackface is if you yourself are already Jimmy Kimmel. You see, Jimmy Kimmel used to take comedic risks. As a radio personality and co-host of The Man Show, Kimmel understood the value of edgy humor and pushing boundaries. The jokes he cracked could often be construed as racist, sexist, homophobic, or misogynistic, but as a talented comedian, he understood that oversensitivity should never stifle comedy. But thanks to comedic climate change, Kimmel has given in to the rising tides of political correctness and is now a watered down whiny pussy who cries and apologizes every night. Just like his fellow late night host Jimmy Fallon caved in and apologized for touching Trump's hair and for wearing blackface to play Chris Rock. Nowadays, thanks to comedic climate change, no one could do that and survive with their career. Justin Trudeau, the Liberal Prime Minister of Canada, won re-election this week, although his party failed to secure a majority in the House of Commons. On Tuesday, the Superdome in New Orleans caught on fire. It's being called the third or fourth worst disaster to ever happen to the Superdome, after Hurricane Katrina and Drew Brees' 2014 season. When asked in an interview about his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, Bill Gates dodged the question and said he's dead, so there's nothing new on that. Somebody's gonna be running off to hide in a castle like Prince Andrew pretty soon. You see, Bill Gates was friends with Jeffrey Epstein even after he was outed as a rapist and pedophile. Gates knew of Epstein's crimes and was possibly involved in these crimes himself. In the old days of late night comedy, this would have made Gates a constant target for derisive jokes and ridicule. But thanks to comedic climate change, he was welcomed by James Corden this week so they could virtue signal about environmental activism and COVID vaccines. The FDA has approved a booster dose of the Pfizer vaccine for certain adults. Priority will be given to those adults who have the greatest need to post about it on Facebook. The FDA also now approved the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 12. So get ready for a bunch of 5-year-olds walking around with huge balls. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, revealed that she's been in a 19-year relationship with a woman. The woman is now demanding that Elvira stop seeing the dark. The government of Lithuania is telling its residents to throw away Chinese mobile phones because they contain censorship devices. Oh, because I never had that problem. My phone's made in China. Trevor Noah called out San Francisco Mayor London Breed for partying at a nightclub without a mask. And Trevor is right to call her out. Like The Daily Show, her hypocrisy is nothing to laugh at. You see, Trevor Noah was once a fantastic stand-up comedian, but he never really found his footing as host of The Daily Show. Jokes were weak, the writing is lame, and Noah was nearly brought down by past offensive tweets he had made about Jews and women. But thanks to comedic climate change, he was able to keep his job simply by becoming a leftist mouthpiece rather than being funny. It's an inconvenient truth that thanks to comedic climate change, securing a late night show has more to do with your political beliefs than comedic talent. In order to ward off food shortages, mutant cows and pigs with double the muscle are being genetically engineered. Shut up, said the cow. I got all this naturally with hard work and exercise. And uh, clearly he got the vaccine too. At the Detroit Zoo, an orphaned polar bear has moved in and become friends with a brown bear. And the property value of the brown bear's cage has gone way up ever since the white bear moved in. But sadly, thanks to comedic climate change, racist polar bear jokes like that one may soon disappear from the earth forever.